Did scientists discover an alien megastructure out in the cosmos this week? I don't know. Neil deGrasse Tyson is talking in this video done by Star Talk. I'm a super sci-fi nerd. I'm glad you actually sent me a link this week about this uh, megastructure that they found in space. Uh, we're going to react to this and hopefully you guys like it so we won't keep you waiting. Let's dive on in. You might have heard some things about a Dyson sphere lately. What's up with that? There's a new study that may suggest we are not alone. A group of researchers say they've identified at least seven stars that might be surrounded by super advanced alien megastructures known as Dyson spheres. What if someday we could build a superstructure so big we could basically surround our sun and capture its energy directly? There's something called a Kardashev civilization, named for Nikolai Kardashev, who's an astrophysicist. If you look at the history of what we call great civilizations, one of the things that distinguishes them is their capacity to generate and consume energy. And so if that's the case, you can think of levels of civilization based on how much energy they consume. And thus was born the Kardashev scale. A civilization that's level one on this Kardashev scale has the power to harness the energy of its home planet. And that's extraordinary when you think about what that involves. Uh, on our home planet, there's the energy of volcanoes, of tornadoes, of hurricanes, and of earthquakes. This is Earth exhibiting a display of energy that typically we run from or die from. If we could control all of that, that would be an extraordinary state of our civilization. Tapping a volcano of its energy so that you now can use that energy to run the city that the exploding volcano would have otherwise leveled. So we're not there yet, but that would be a civilization type one. Civilization type two on a Kardashev scale is, well, what else is generating energy out there? Well, our host star, the sun. So imagine we had total control over the sun's energy. Right now, we just set up a few solar panels here and there, and it's, you know, we're, you know whatever energy happens to get there on a clear day and not at night, that we're tapping some of the energy of the sun. But the sun is emitting energy in every single direction in space. So imagine you could harness all of that energy. That's vastly more energy than is contained in the earth. That would be a civilization of extraordinary power. Would they have warp drives, wormholes? Who knows? They'd be traveling across the galaxy, between galaxies, because the energy is so plentiful and they have access to it and especially can control it. It's a big factor when you have access to awesome supplies of energy. That would be scale two. Three on the Kardashev scale would be you can control all the energy of all the stars in your galaxy. So our galaxy, the Milky Way, has several hundred billion stars. So if you found some way to harness all of that, oh my gosh, this is, I mean, I can't, who can imagine what that is? Can you create universes? Can you, I mean, who knows? I don't know. I can't think that far ahead. What I do know is that it would be awesomely dangerous <laughs> as any new access to energy has always become when in the hands of bad actors on the geopolitical stage. So what this has done is enabled some people, some colleagues of mine, to say, if there's a civilization type two controlling all the energy of its host star, would we be able to see that in our data? There's so much data now available with many telescopes that are, that has, that has observational and spectroscopic data of billions of stars. Billions. 
We have observational data on billions of stars in the universe, not only in our galaxy, but other galaxies. And so if there was a type two civilization, could you detect it? What would it look like? Well, a couple of things. If you're looking at invisible light, the kind of light that the sun primarily gives off, they would be blocking that light to absorb that energy for their needs. So you would see an ordinary star just begin to disappear as they built structures around it to absorb that energy. There's an interesting fact here. Well, there's no such thing as a free lunch in the universe. You can't just take the sun's energy and then have the energy disappear. It manifests in other ways. You know how it manifests? As heat. Heat. You know this intuitively, even if you've never thought about it. If you have an internal combustion engine car, the kind with pistons, right? You put in gasoline, that gasoline burns via pistons and spark plugs and all the right to move the car forward and the engine gets hot. You are used to This is a good exercise in expanding the imagination, some of these, you know, things that we're reacting to. I like this, but I've like was thinking about we have so far to go before we get to this. And he was talking about kind of like the dangers and I was giggling inside because he was like, if you think about the geopolitical blah, 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 I was like, I don't even think any of that's going to be going on by the time we have the capacity to create megastructures surrounding a star. Geopolitical? Well, yeah, he's just, I think he's talking about the wars and the tension on the planet and stuff like that. I think if we even get to a place where we can build megastructures around a star, that stuff, we have to clearly transcend, I think, some of that stuff. Yeah, you know, it's, who knows? I mean, one of the things that popped into my head was, if this is leading to the idea that a Dyson sphere, which is named yeah. after a scientist with the last name Dyson, I think, that came up with this idea that they would build megastructures around stars to harness the energy. Sometimes I think it's referred to as Dyson rings. Mm. Um, if we're, if this is getting to the point where you can spot them, I haven't seen this video, but if that's, yeah. you know, he's getting into it, you can see that that's where it's going, is that you can see them that, you remember in Star Trek that how humans got, incorporated into the universal collective yeah. was because they developed warp drive and yeah. aliens saw it and they go, okay, this is how it works. When a, when a species develop warp drive, we intervene and we enter them into the federation of whatever yeah. space. Uh, and I thought, how neat would it be if they were so aware that they saw us seeing them and they were like, now that you've seen that we have these Dyson rings, we're going to show you how to build them. Ooh. You know what I mean? And then we came, and that's how it works. And they were like, the first aliens that showed us how to build them, we didn't invent these things either. Yeah, yeah. Brought us into the fold. You know what I mean? And in that way, you would have kind of a half-evolved species like us that's still like animalistic, <laughs> you know, with crazy power. So the likelihood that that would happen is probably very, very ridiculously low. But that's just where my mind went. Like, what would skip us ahead? Because I'm a skipper aheader. Oh, I hate me too, man. I hate screwing around with the, the minutia of the yeah. moment even. Even though I enjoy these videos, there's a part of me that is like, come on already. Like when is like the big discovery? Like when is the big thing coming? Like I keep hearing things about like alien disclosures coming in Congress and stuff like that. It's never good enough for me. I'm like, But uh, on our stay spiritual show about spirituality, yeah. this is a deficiency within you and me is that we are this ADD, <laughs> what's, what's next, what's next, what's next? Yeah. Because that, but, cause the first video I sent you about this but just the idea of Dyson rings this week got me to thinking about a Buddha like thousands of years ago that's like got it all together he's where it's at it's like you I don't care about spacefaring yeah. everything is right here there's always that aspect of it too yeah. is what happened to your sense of your childlike sense of everything is right here you know, this yeah. is where it's at. I, mm. That's cool too. You know, yeah, can I grab stop it? Can I trying to get to somewhere? Yeah. Stop. Just like see what's around you. So you think it through a little bit. You're like, even if it was like, oh my god, we saw the Dyson rings. They saw us seeing it. Now they've sent people down to like tell us how to do it. How leagues far away? From, like, what are you going to sign up to be work on the Dyson rings? You know, <laughs> how how many layers would separate from that? You can already watch fantasy. You can already fantasize about things way before the the. You know, how long does it take them to do road work yeah, oh without my, criticizing yeah. anybody? <laughs> Everything in real time takes forever. Yeah, yeah. And so 
it's just a reminder that there's still a place for spirituality. There's still a place for like going <laughs> inward and getting right with yourself without being tantalized by aliens and technology. Yeah, yeah. So that energy not only propels your car forward, but also turns into heat. If there's a civilization that managed to completely enclose its host star, it would get rid of all the visible light because that's high quality energy that it's using. It takes that light through the solar panels. The star would slowly disappear from a quote, a regular looking star and would ultimately appear as a red glow in your infrared telescopes. So there's a recent study in a peer reviewed journal, the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, one of the more respected journals in the world of a study that's just simply looking for these red, these red glowing blobs in the galaxy, in the pre-existing data that's already out there. Didn't even have to design a telescope for this. The telescopes are already bringing in the data. They're just asking a different question on those images. So out of a sample of millions of stars, they found seven candidates that might be one of these type two civilizations, or it could be some gas cloud that was warmed up and is radiating infrared. <laughs> so. Uh, of course, the press loves aliens. If your first guess is, there's an alien civilization that's making this infrared, the press will talk about the work. If it's, well, it could be gas clouds that have been warmed with dust in them that have been warmed by this energy that's been radiated and we're and it's masquerading as what could be a type two civilization. You can't rule that out either as a scientist just because you don't fully understand what you observed, it doesn't mean aliens did it. That shouldn't be anyone's first guess. The universe brims with mysteries and physical phenomenon we're still discovering. And so, yeah, just I tend to be a little more conservative about that. A friend of mine died a few years ago, Freeman Dyson, a brilliant physicist. Uh, he came up with the idea of an entire sphere. So a Kardashian civilization type two they just simply have control over all of the energy of their host star. One way to do that is to build a sphere around it that completely encloses that star. So no energy escapes your detectors, your panels. It just needs to have the power to tap that energy for whenever it needed it for whatever purpose. And you can imagine sort of strips of of panels. It wouldn't have to be the entire, let some energy get out. If you needed it, maybe those panels can, can close up and open again, like those stadiums that open and close in, in the rain or in the hot sun. And there's no telling what inventions, what discoveries, what new understandings of the universe would unfold in those civilizations versus ours, a type zero civilization. <laughs> so that's what's up. In case you were wondering, the long and short of what it is to harness energy that's all around us. Till next time, keep looking up. Way to bring us back down to earth, Neil. I like Type zero, zero humanity. <laughs> I like that he brought up the Kardashian thing. I don't think I ever heard of that before. I know that there's several models of types of yeah. progression in, in, in <laughs> plant, whatever, cultures or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I never heard of the Kardash one. I wanted to make a Kardashian joke, but it's too obvious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then I was also in my cynical brain thinking of the person that's waiting for the the grounded part to happen because they can't wait to put someone in their place at a party. Like, I can't wait to be at a party and some dork starts bringing up, like, you see they found Darson's, Dyson Spears around them? And being like, yeah, but it could be hot gas. Like, yeah. <laughs> idiot. More than likely. You know what I mean? Like, some people likely. are a little too giddy to, like, keep things real. Yeah, you know, it's like come on, let's, let's oscillate back yeah, and forth. Let's have some have some fun. Also, while well, trying to keep it real at the same time, it, it probably is hot, hot gas. But I was also thinking that there's a cause and effect to everything. Like, what are the consequences of building a mega structure around a star that you block out the sun? You might like destroy a whole other planet by doing that. We're like, well, oh, let's just make this thing for us. We're gonna take all the energy. And like the other they planets, find, like, hey, they, they just find like a dead species about to cut the ribbon on the the, 
the Megasphere, but they froze to death because they blocked their son from... <laughs> yeah, like, what do, you, what do you do if you have multi, multi-life, multi uh, you know, planets in one <laughs> right. thing? And then, like, what if it throws the whole, like, uh, you know, solar system off of track? We blocked out the sun so we could take all its power, then all of a sudden the planet starts spinning off into nowhere because... You know, We're kidding around. Somebody yeah. out there is like, you idiots! If they knew, or if they were smart enough to build something like that around the sun, they would not overlook something like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're just kidding around. Let's hope, hope so. Well, guys, we'll end this one here. Hope you'll, hopefully you like this. If you did, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, share this with a friend, and everyone, until next time, stay spiritual. spiritual.